What does Doug Marqueda think about Filipino martial arts? According to Doug Marqueda, the philosophy of the method is in circular movements. Namely, interaction and training is similar to dancing and control over the opponent using a karambit knife. Looking at his apprentices, you can see that there is a lot of effort in the application of this complicated technique. That is, a method that is based, according to Doug Marqueda, on a question and an answer. When the question is an unrealistic attack by the attacker. That is, the answer is also unrealistic of the knife's breaking and counter-attack. That is, in reality, if you didn't break a knife, then there will be no continuation of an attack against you. And that's what Filipino martial arts people don't understand. They claim that after an unrealistic defense they cut vital tendons in the hand, then reach vital places in the human body that are critical to life. When it is a result after the victim managed to defend himself from a realistic attack. And again we repeat the problem, that there is no real attack in their training. So if a person dies in reality, then who will do all these beautiful attacks? It can be compared to a choreographic application of dance. Lots of repetitions of a circular technique of movement. When according to Doug Marqueda during training there is no quick and determined attack, there is no violence during the attack. He justifies it with words like without art in which method everything looks dark. One of the reasons for this is so that the opponent does not get hurt. That is, he himself claims a lack of realism in training. I would like to draw your attention to the fact that during training they do not use protective glasses or any protective equipment for the body. Unlike other self-defense methods that do practice a determined attack in order not to get hurt during training, you do it with appropriate body protection equipment. Maybe this is the reason why a determined attack is neglected in the method. In any case, according to our brain, a person who is not skilled in a realistic attack usually will not be able to defend himself in the same scenario on the street. And then the interesting question arises, why do they sharpen all these movements? Maybe they won't work at all in reality? If they don't test the technique with shields, then there is no proof it will work. Might a combination of this technique with other techniques be effective? But we will not know until there is no proof of this. Admittedly, in this technique, there is an interesting use of the wrist for breaking and attacking. And these techniques can be seen in the application of special forces in several countries in the world. One of Doug Marqueda's claims is the importance of the distance between the attacker and the victim, when a victim must always move away from the attacker. This claim is fundamentally opposed to the claim of the Israeli Kalich method, in which they claim that in the attack with the knife one should reduce the range with the attacker and take control of the attacking hand. So what is true? An Israeli method in which they attack in reality and with great determination, and as a result, the response is determined and realistic. Or the Kali method in which the attack is unrealistic, and therefore it is not possible to know about the continuation of the victim's self-defense. An answer to this question can only be found out through an experiment with protective equipment for the victim and the attacker, and through several attacks using a rubber knife with paint that will simulate the vulnerable area of the knife. Without an experiment, it is not possible to say whether the Kali method will not work in reality, but we can only doubt the effectiveness of the method due to many complicated movements. Dear friends thank you for listening, if you liked our video, please subscribe to our channel, and ring the bell below to get an update on our new posts.